Um, all right. Today's topic is the black prophet Job and our people today. The black prophet Job and our people today. Hey, since Google don't lie, Officer Alicia, do me a favor and type in on Google the prophet Job under images. The prophet Job under images. Let's see. I want to see what Google pops up with. The prophet Job under images. Images. All right, put it on the screen. So here is the prophet Job. And you heard y'all heard Deacon Abiel say, Google don't lie. Google don't lie. So uh click the one on the far right. Yeah, that one. So they got Job as a an Edomite. And believe it or not, there are some Israelite camps that teach that Job was an was an Edomite because he dwelt in the land of Uz. But I'm sure you today Job was not an Edomite. Okay. Do me a favor. Let's open up. Actually, the, the proof is let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Job 30. Who's reading for me, Yuri? Yes, sir. Let's go to Job 30, verse 30. It's not right there. Job chapter 30 and verse 30. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. So the forefather, the prophet Job said, my skin is black upon me. Okay. Now you've heard Christians will say, it doesn't mean his color. It means his, his it's, a, it's a, taken out of context. It means his demeanor, demeanor. Really? Is that what that means? Hey, give me the Alicia, give me the book, the whole the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Put it on the screen for us. Put it on the screen for us. Yep, put it on the screen. So I got this book here, Revised Expanded Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. So I was curious to what it said about color. Go to the next page. This is page 224. Can we zoom in? Can you read that, Yuri? Black often used to denote the color of physical objects. Hair, Leviticus 13, 31, 37, Song of Solomon 5, 11. Skin, Job 30, 30. You see that? So the scholars know that Job 30, 30 is referring to skin, just as Song of Solomon 1 and 5 and Lamentations 4 and 8. Everybody see that? So let's go back to the Bible. Read that again for us. Job chapter 30 and verse 30. My skin is black upon me. Now I went out and I got a, I had another book. You know, I got books in my little library I haven't really gone through. So I'm just going through. Give me the next book, The Catacombs. The Catacombs. This is Life and Death in Early Christianity. And it, let's go to the next page. Let's go. The, the Catacombs was a list of un, a a range of underground tombs that was throughout Rome and Italy that the Jews had built and, and or used as places of refuge, places of meeting, because there was a great uh, persecution against the Jews. Now, let's read that. Zoom in on that highlighted right there. Read it. Job appears about a dozen times in catacomb paintings. He usually is a solitary seated figure, but sometimes his wife is also shown, offering him food on a rod or stick and not touching him because of the loathsome sores that afflict him. Now, let's go to the next page. I want you to look at the color of his skin. Now, the whole book is in black and white. But you can tell by the color of his skin. Pull back out. I like the full, the full image. Look at his legs, his hands, his face, com uh, compared to the rest of the painting. And these were paintings on the catacomb walls throughout Italy, Rome, underground cistern of uh, tombs, burial. So that's Job. My skin is black. So they, our forefathers that were in those catacombs, they painted the forefather Job 
on the tombs in the catacombs. Give me the next picture. This is just one of the entrances. Read, zoom in on the far right wording, the lettering, the words. Yes, read that. For Malta, entrance to the catacomb at Tad Dyer Rabat. The process of tunneling into a hillside is well illustrated here. A church was built at the entrance, but this has long since disappeared. Right. So now let's go to the next page where you go inside one of the catacombs. You see, you go down those stairs. All this was um, built by the Israelites, carved out of rock. Okay, give me the next one, next picture. Now let's zoom in and see who that is. 32, Peter and Marcellinus, Christ enthroned between SS. Saints. Saints, Peter and Paul. Early 5th century. Right. Now let's pull back out and let's see Christ between Peter and Paul. Look look, look, look at that. Do y'all see that? That's Christ there. Pull back. I want to see Peter and Paul too. That whole thing. Look at that. Black man. Y'all see that, right? Ain't something. I, I didn't make it up. And he put the book in black and white to be cunning and slick. But, hey, where there's a will, there's a way. Give me the next page, please. Uh, zoom in on the words on the left. Read that. 37, Domitia in the Arcosilium, Christ Orpheus, surrounded by various animals. Above left, the prophet Micah. Now you see the prophet Micah on the left right there. Can you zoom in on that? Not that one. Over, over, over. Nope. Right. Nope. Left. Nope. Nope. No, no. Right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Look at him. Look at him. The prophet Micah, black on the stones. Okay. Go back out. Read the rest of it. Micah 5 2, Matthew 2 6. Right. Moses striking the rock. Cent center left, Peter and Marcellinus, the fall. Center right, Via Latina, Adam and Eve to left. Their sons, Abel and Cain, bring their offerings to the Lord. The serpent can be seen in the center. So now they have paintings all around. Now these are tombs where their burial, where their Jews were buried. And they used the, these catacombs as places of hiding, refuge, meeting places away from Rome. Pull back out. Okay. Give me the next page, please. All right. Read that. Opposite bottom, 40. Abraham preparing to sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. Pull out. All right. That's the bottom right, I believe. Bottom right. Let me see that one. Okay. That's Isaac, baby Isaac, a black boy. All right. Pull back up. Give me the next page. Now, this one I found very interesting. And I'm going to tell you why. Read the writing there. 43, Thrasen. This series of contiguous paintings is most comprehensive. They are upper row, Moses striking the rock. Y'all can see Moses at the top with the stick in his hand. Go ahead. Jesus multiplying the loaves. Jesus right there, black. You see, oh, no, no, that's right there. Yes, that's Christ right there multiplying the loaves. Christ is portrayed as a black man. And look at the disciples carrying the loaves in their hands. Right there, all black. Everybody's black with afros. Go ahead, read on. Epiphany, three orantes. Mm -hmm. Noah, the raising of Lazarus, lower row. Daniel. Daniel is right there. You see Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel is black right there. Now watch the, the next one, the next person. Read the next one. Tobias with his fish and the angel. So Tobias and with Tobias with his fish and where is the writing about Tobias at? In the apocrypha. Now the Esau, the, the apocrypha is not canon, but look at Tobias with the fish. Zoom in, zoom in, right there, zoom in. The whole Tobias is black and the angel is black. Thank you. I forgot. Hey, hey Abiel, can you do the bomb for me? Yeah, I want you to take that. Yeah. So the angel uh, Raphael is black. 
Tobias is holding a fish. Tobias is black. That's in the Apocrypha that white Christians today say is not canon, but our fathers use the Apocrypha. The hell is this? I didn't get a bomb, Abigail. It's glitching? It's all slowing on a delay. So you gotta hit it again. We're gonna work it out, okay. <laughs> Give me the next picture. The next. Okay. Now, this is another book I had in the archives. Let me read that. Uh, let's go inside the book. It's, some of it's in English, a lot of it's in Russian. This is the uh, cathedral, the church that's in Russia. Let's go inside the church in Russia. Now, I want y'all to look on the walls. Can we zoom in on some of these pictures? Do y'all see these black people on the walls? Let's get some more. Come on, y'all. Give me some more. Yeah, right there. Do y'all see this? Come on. Give me some more. All around the church, you see black people on the walls. And this is in Russia. I know some of y'all think, well, how can we can't find none? These books are not going to be put in your African-American book section. That's not where you're going to find them. Ex expand your way of thinking. Expand your horizon and go to the Jewish book section or the Byzantine book section, the Middle Age book section, the archaeology book section. You're not going to find any of these type of things in black book sections. All you're going to get in black book sections is Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. That's it. And Sojourner Truth. That's it. And slavery. But nothing else. Okay? Give me the next page. Now, here's more inside the church. Let's zoom in on some of these pictures here. Look at that. Y'all see Christ there. You got Mary there and the angel there. Okay. All black, black man, black woman. Okay. That one, I believe, is Joseph right there. Joseph, her, Christ's father, his daddy, Joseph. That's right, his daddy, Joseph, the black angel. Let's go up. Look at all these black images. Hey, can you see the one with the crown on the head? Right above, yeah, zoom in on that one. It's blurred out, it's pixelated. But that one right there is King David. Black. King David. Look, at, look on the ceiling. Look at all these black people. The saints of Israel. You can't make this stuff up. But this is what the Christian community will like, want you to think. It's a figment of your imagination. They're not really black. Ooh. They're really white and you're under an influence. No, you're under the spell called Christianity. White supremacy Christianity. Everybody understand that? All right. Give me the next page in the same book. Let's see who that is at the bottom. Go to the bottom. Who's that? Job on the garbage dump. So that's the father, Job. Pull back out now. Black, a black man. And don't tell me there was a fire. The fire didn't get on a loincloth wrapped around his loins. It got on every place else. It burned every place else but his loincloth and that guy's hat on the top right. You got to be kidding. See, Christians can't fool us. That's why we don't entertain Christianity. We don't indulge in stupidity from Christians. Because anything we show them, they'll close their eyes like them three dumb monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. They don't know nothing. Christians don't know a daggone thing. So from there, give me Job. Thank you, Alicia. Give me Job chapter 30 and verse 29. Job chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons. So when Job said he's a brother to dragons, I mean, we ain't going to touch on it today. But his, his friends represented something. I'm going to show you just a little bit today about his friends. Okay, read on. And a, and a companion to owls. And a companion to owls. Go ahead. My skin is black upon me. Now he comes back. My skin is black upon me. Go ahead. And my bones are burned with heat. Now let's go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And Officer Yuri, let's start at verse... 15. Job. So we're going to talk about the calamity of, of Job, the forefather Job. Let me look at it. Mm. Start at 12. 
Job chapter 1 and verse 12. And the start, Lord, at nine, start at 9. Start at 9. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. So this is Satan, spiritual demon Satan in heaven, having a conversation with the Most High. And he says, if you let me touch this dude, he will curse you to his face. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. So the Lord allowed Satan to touch Job. Go ahead. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. He said, but upon Job himself, don't put your hands on him. So now, let's jump down. I'm going to just get to some key points. Read ver We're going to read verse 15 to 17. This is the first thing Satan did against Job. Go ahead. Verse 15. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Put, write this down. Sabians is Somalia. The Sabians are the Nilot Somalians. Read. Yea, yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So the Sabians killed Job's servants. Read. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. So more of his servants and Job's sheep got burnt up. Go ahead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Read. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So the first three things, write this down, that Satan took from Job was his source of income. His source of income, which was his business and his goods. Source of income, business, goods. Satan took that away from Job first. All right? Now, I'm re we're reading this because some of you may be able to relate to this. All right, now let me show you how that relates to us as a people. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 33, please. What happened to us? Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, uh -huh. and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all way. So our source of income, our goods would be taken from us prophetically from there jump over to verse 43 verse 43 the stranger that is within thee. start at 42 i like 42 verse 42 all thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume didn't we just read about the fire came from heaven and burnt up his crops this was same very similar go ahead the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low read. he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So we would have nothing. We as a nation, as a people, would have nothing. That's what the prophecy is saying. Jump to verse 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. You know what it means for the abundance of all things? We had the earth in our possession. Everything was ours. And it was taken from us like that. Why? Because of our own disobedience. So just like Job lost his source of income as a people, we lost it too. He lost his goods, so did we. He lost what, 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 his uh, businesses, so, do, so did we. Jump over to verse 16, 15 and 16. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Unless you give me some images, read 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed, whatever city we would dwell in as a people, we'd be cursed, having nothing. Go ahead. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Whatever fields we're in, we would be cursed, picking tobacco, things of that nature. Read. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. A basket and our store. That's our source of income would be cursed. What verse is that? 
That was verse 17. Come on. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Thy children. And the fruit of thy land. Uh -huh, fruit of our land. The increase of thy kind. Your kind is your cattle. And the flocks of thy sheep. So just as Job's was taken from him, it was taken from us as a people. Everybody see that? Go back to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Uh, let's, come on, I need you to be quicker than this. You already know. You know the scriptures. Come on. Yeah, these are examples of us being cursed in the field. All right. Where we at, uh, Yuri? You call Job chapter 1. Job sir. chapter 1. Let me hear verse 18. Verse 18. And 19. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Uh -huh. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Job's sons and daughters was taken from him. Give me that Deuteronomy 28. Uh, I think it's 41. Might Deut be 42. I'm not looking at it. 41, 42. Deuteronomy chapter 40, 28 and verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Just like Job lost his, so did we lose ours. Okay, going back to uh, give me Lamentations 221. Lamentations 2 and verse 21. Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 21. The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Meaning killed. Go ahead. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pity. So our sons and daughters were killed. Our sons and daughters were gone into captivity. So what we're reading about Job. Now remember this. Job was, was a real person. But I want you to show, I'm going to show you the similitudes of Job's life to the 12 tribes of Israel today. If I'm going too fast, y'all let me know. Let's go back to Job 2. Job chapter 2. And I want verse 7. Job chapter 2 and verse start, 7. Start at 6. Start at 6. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, uh, 61. I'm not looking at it, so you know what I want. The one about sickness. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So you see, it's very similar to what Job went through. We as a people are going through. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 and 2. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against so me. So that's what the Lord is saying to our people. Read. The ox knoweth his owner. As dumb as an ox is, he knows who his owner is. Go ahead. And the ass, his master's crib. And as dumb as an ass is, an ass, you could put an ass a mile away, he could find his way home to his master's crib. Go ahead. But Israel doeth not know. My people do if not consider. We don't know who our creator is. We don't know our homeland. And we don't know our identity. That's what that's saying. We don't. Ah, sinful nation. Now it says, ah, sinful nation. Go ahead. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Come on. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Why should you be stricken anymore? Come on. Ye will revolt more and more. Watch this. Here it come. The whole head is sick. The whole head of the nation of Israel is sick. Go ahead. And the whole heart faints. The whole heart is faint. Come on. From the sole of the foot. From the sole of the foot of the 12 tribes of Israel. Even unto the head. Even unto the head. There is no soundness in it. There is no sound. Just like there was no soundness in the forefather Job. 
There's no soundness in the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. But wounds. But wounds. And bruises. And bruises. And putrefying sores. Just like Job had. Just like Job had. Come on. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Neither mollified with ointment. Go ahead. Your country is desolate. Our homeland is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Mm -hmm. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. As overthrown by strangers. Back to Job chapter 2, please. Am I going too fast? They said yes. Okay, I'm going to slow it up. Job. <laughs> chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, Yuri. Job, chapter 2 and verse 9. So Job lost everything, right? Is that right? But look what, look what Satan left him with. Read. Then said his wife. His what? His wife. She didn't get killed with the kids. She didn't get killed with the kids. Go ahead. Then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. You can't make this stuff up. What did Job's wife say? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Go ahead. But he said unto her. Now Job, he ain't, although he was sick, jacked up, he ain't take no mess from her. Go ahead. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Woman, you sound stupid as hell. Go ahead. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? <laughs> I'm sorry. Read that again. <laughs> what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? You was with me when God blessed us with homes, houses, source of income. You was good. But now that I lost everything, including my health. Read that again. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Shall we not receive evil? Go ahead. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Job did not sin with his lips. Give me Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Job's mindset was, though God slay him, what? Yet will I what? Yet will I trust in him. Uh -huh. But I will maintain my own ways before him. See that? Job maintained his ways. He kept his integrity. That's what I need y'all to understand. Now, back to his wife. His wife is our wife. What? Can I get a bomb? Give me Micah 7 and 5. Micah. 7 and 5. Micah, chapter 7 and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Mm -hmm. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You see what the Bible says? This is what the pro Christ is saying this through. Hey, give me that proof that it's Christ. Yuri in a, uh, Corinthians. Oh, no, no. Peter. Peter, 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 Peter. Give me that. Is it 2 Peter 1? No, sir. 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Thank you. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Come on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. The Spirit of Christ which was in the prophets did signify. Was that it, Yuri? When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So what I wanted y'all to see out of that, you may hear us say when we're teaching, Christ said this, Christ said that. And we're in the book of Michael, the book of Job. That is Christ speaking through them. Everybody understand that? Let's go back to Micah 7. And, Micah. and I want the bottom. Keep, yes. keep the doors. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Now, you might ask, why? Why can't I tell my wife everything? Well, you can read biblically. There were certain situations. Hold that. Hold that. Give me the book of Judges. It said, keep your mouth from her that lieth on your bosom. Yuri, I yes, want you because it just popped in my head. I want the book of Judges, 
And I want chapter, is it 15? Uh, 16? Mm. Uh, Delilah, where is she at? I want Delilah, chapter 16. Uh, mm, look at verse 19. Yes, sir. This is Samson and Delilah. Look at 19. Judges, chapter 16 and verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. She put Samson to sleep upon her knees. Go ahead. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Delilah sexed Samson so good, she made Samson fall asleep on her knees. And when he went to sleep, because he told her everything, she used it against him to destroy him. Now let's go back to Micah. You want verse 16, Bishop? Go ahead, read it. Verse your, 16. Your mind is there. Your spirit want to read it, so go ahead. Sorry, sir. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There have not come a razor upon mine head. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. Why am I upside down? What the hell is going on here? You can't make this stuff up. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, Yuri, where we at? Micah 7. Yes, sir. And 5 again. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Y'all see that? Keep your mouth shut. You ain't got to tell her everything. So that's, Samson had a simp spirit on him, and it cost him dearly. Some of you brothers, now I'm not saying all women are wicked. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But. Christ said, don't tell her everything. Hey, do you understand that? Here you go. You get into a marriage. You telling your wife, you got this set up, you got that set up, you got this. And she's like, oh, yeah, really, really, really? And she's just abiding her time. Not all women. Not all. And she waits to the opportune time and says, I've been thinking about this. I think I want a divorce. And half of all the things you got, I'm going to take half. How does she know you got those things, brothers? Because you got a big mouth. You got a blabber mouth. And you told her everything. There have been several instances here in IUIC. Brothers, you were so hot in the pants, you had to go get married. You got married to this woman here, and she took you to the cleaners. She made sure, what you, what you got? You got a good job. What else you got? Yeah. And she let, she, your head is on her knees and she bouncing your head around. <laughs> she waited for some time and took you to court. And now you are struggling, working in McDonald's. If y'all don't learn from these classes, we can't help y'all. Everybody in here is not Sarah. And every brother ain't Abraham. Let's go on back. To Micah 7 and 6, Yuri. Micah chapter 7 and verse 6. Here I am in the hospital. My wife, I'm, I'm in the hospital all jacked up. My wife told me, uh, what you got laid to the side for me? Don't worry about it. I ain't dead yet. When I'm dead, you'll know. Not before. I ain't telling you nothing. That's me. Bishop's so mean. I, yeah, I am. Micah, uh, where we at? chapter 7 and verse 6. Go ahead. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter, mm -hmm. the daughter riseth up against her mother. Now, y'all seeing this today. The son's rising up against the father. Daughter rising up against the mother. Go ahead. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Read. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. A man's enemies are they of his own house. That's what Christ said. That's what the son of God said. Go ahead. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Sometimes the only one we can trust in, brothers, is the Most High. Go ahead. 
Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Go ahead. When I fall, I shall arise. When I fall, I shall arise. Believe it or not, some of your wives are waiting for you to drop dead and die. Not all, but some. It said, yeah, we've seen it here. Soon as the brother died, she had a Christian funeral. Woo, praise white Jesus. You can't make this stuff. Read that again, Yuri. When I fall, I shall arise. Mm -hmm. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Come on. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Watch this. Then she that is my enemy shall see it. Then she that is my enemy. She's been waiting for you to drop dead and die. It says, then she that is mine enemy shall see what the Lord shall do. Go ahead. And shame shall cover her. And shame shall cover who? Shall cover her. Shall cover her. That's brothers. That's what, don't worry. Some, we know some of y'all are going through it because you got Job's wife. Don't worry. Read that again, Yuri. Then she that is my enemy shall see it. Mm -hmm. And shame shall cover her. Shame's going to cover her. Go ahead. Which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? This is what Job's wife said, which is what some of your wives say. Where is the Lord your God? Go ahead. Mine eyes shall behold her. My eyes shall behold her. Now shall she, shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. She going to get what she deserves. You know what that means? She going to be trodden down as the mire, like mud in the street. What do I mean? Dead. Dead. Because she don't believe in God. She don't believe in his truth. She's just here. Going back now to Job. Job 2, 9 and 10. One more. So in case we forgot. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him. Then said his wife unto him. Doest thou still retain thine integrity? What you holding on to that Bible for? Let it go, nigga. Let it go. Go ahead. Curse God and die. Why don't you curse God and die? Look at you. You're sick. You're on your last legs. Come on. Die, nigga. Die. Go ahead. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You sound stupid as hell. Go ahead. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we receive good from God? And shall we not receive evil? And shall we not get evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job did not sin with his lips, but his wife did. Now, from there, Matthew 10, 35. Matthew, let's see if things changed in the New Testament. I know you thought you had a good wife. Some of you think you got a good wife. Some of them are good. Some of the sisters are legitimately good. But there are some. Now, I got a video of a brother and wife here this week. Fist fighting in the house. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't. Put it on the screen. That, no, no, don't, put, don't put the video on the screen. Don't put the video on the screen. Don't put the video on the screen. Don't put it on the screen. Um, fist fighting. She grabbed the baby. He trying to snatch the baby. She called the cops. She gets him arrested. He in jail. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, what did I say, go Yuri? Matthew. And that's Atlanta. Greenleaf, Greenleaf, Greenleaf. I just love Atlanta. Matthew 10. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at... <laughs> Wait, Yuri, Yuri, we can't hear nothing. Where are you at? Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. He just don't want to hear us say greenly. He's going to try to overread everybody. Go ahead, Yuri. Where are you at? Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So Christ ain't coming for peace in the, in the house. Right? Why? Because some going to believe, some not going to believe. That's what it means. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Didn't we just read that in Micah 7 and 5? Yes. Letting you know Christ was speaking that through Micah. Now he's saying it for himself right here. Go ahead. Verse 37. 
he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Some of you love your parents more than the Lord, okay? Sisters have come to us and said, I have married a mama's boy. Sister, you knew he was a mama's boy before you got with him. You knew he spoke to his mama every damn day. Your argument with him, his mama know about it because she called you and cussed you out. He's not the type to marry. He's a mama boy. Read that again. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Brother, you know she loved her mama and daddy more than you. She, she set it up so that y'all get a place living near her parents. You can't escape her parents. They're right there in all your business. You know who you are. Read that again. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You're not worthy of the Lord. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Some of you sisters, you, you, you idolize your children. Christ said, if you love them kids more than me, you're not worthy of me. Brothers, I really don't see that too much in the brothers too much, but it might be one or two of you. It might be one or two. I just love your kids. I just love my kids more than that life itself. You can't be Christ's disciple. Okay? If you love your kids, your kids will get you locked up. I'm telling you. Let them rebel against this truth. They will get you locked up. We have seen it from New York to Texas. My parents abused me. They forced me to keep God's commandments, and I don't want to keep it. Click, click. Now you in jail. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep playing with them kids. Where we at, Yuri? Verse 38. Got it. And he that taketh Oh, they're cute right now. Your kids are real cute. Some of y'all got adorable kids. I do say so myself. But I always say, just wait. Just wait till they get a little older. You're going to see if they're for the Lord or for this world. And it, sometimes you may ask, well, does it depend on what, the, what mama is teaching them? Yes, sometimes it does. Sometimes they're just pure D demons. Read on. Where you at, Yuri? Verse 38. Come on. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What does that mean? Uh, can I, what does that mean? Little can I, little can I, not you, but little can I. That means, Shalom Bishop, that means that you have to be willing to risk your life. Give your life for this truth. Exactly. Be willing to sacrifice your life for this truth. Some of you will, some of you won't. Okay. Where are we at, Yuri? Verse 39. Go ahead. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Meaning what? When persecution comes, you step back. You don't want no parts of it. You want to save your life. Christ said you're going to lose it. Meaning what? You're going to get ash. You're going to get thermonuclear fire. You're going to get the lake of fire. That's what he's talking about. Read it again. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. And he that loseth his life for my sake. That, he that loses his life for my sake goes back to the cross in verse 38. And he that loses his life, what? For my sake shall find it. If you give up your life for this true Christ, you're going to have eternal life. Don't worry about it. That's what the Son of God said. Everybody understand that? Get uh, Ecclesiastes 726. Now, let me let y'all know something. The book of Job never says what Job did with his wife. Whether he kept her, put her in check and she followed, or if he got rid of her, it doesn't say. And I, I remember I used to sit back and wonder why. And I had to think about it. The Lord left it open for us, because everybody's situation may be a little bit different. Some women you can correct and say, sis, you sound stupid. Don't say that no more. She say, okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, my Lord. Some of y'all got wives. She'd be like, I'm going to say it again, nigga. Drop dead, curse God, and die. And what? What you going to do, nigga? You sick. You can't do nothing. <laughs> Some of y'all got wives like that. Some of y'all don't. Ecclesiastes 7.26, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. So Christ, speaking through Solomon, is saying he finds more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and traps. Like Delilah, for example. Good example. Okay. Read on. And her hands as bands. Mm -hmm. Trying to trap you up from God. Trying to keep you from the word of God. Go ahead. 
Whoso pleaseth God. Now, brother, if you want to please God, shall escape from her. You will leave a woman like that. God says you will escape. Y'all know what escape means? Get the hell away. You ever understand that? The simps here don't understand it. They, I ain't get a response from them. I don't know. See my wife. I see you. You know who you are. But everybody tough, though. We strong in the Lord and the simp of your life. Man. We need a quicker response on the bombs here. Yuri, read that again. Yuri, read that again, please. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. But the sinner, but the sinner, the simp, the sinner shall be taken by her. You're going to stay with her. Oh, she's the love of my life. I know she hate God and hate me, but I love her. I just love her. I know she smacked me upside the head. I know she called me a no good, dirty ass nigga at times, but I love her. That's my baby. God says the sinner shall be taken by her. I hope y'all understand it. Go ahead. Which means this simp brother will never work up the courage to move the hell on, to get the hell away from her. He'll always have an excuse, a reason as to, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to fix that. Meanwhile, you've been a band since you've known her. You're going to be a band tomorrow. She ain't changing. And we don't care how, many, how much muscles you got. I find the biggest and strongest brothers are the weakest of you all. We've seen it all through our years. What the hell is this? Y'all be the weakest dudes. You big on the outside, but real petite on the inside. A seven foot simp. The hell is this? The hell is going on? <laughs> Where we at, Yuri? Ecclesiastes 7.26. Oh, no, go uh, give me Ezekiel 14. So the question sometimes comes up, was Job real? Yes, he was real. The prophet Job was real. And he was part of the holy seed. Okay? Now, God compares Job with people like Daniel and Noah. That's how you know he was real. Okay? Let's get that in Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse, verse 20. 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. So the prophecy is God will send famine. Uh, Elisha, I sent you some pictures. Put it on the screen so I can see them first. That's not what I sent you. One, one moment. So what I'm going to show you Hey, Yuri, yeah, go ahead, blow that one up. So here's an example of famine on the continent. Okay, give me the next picture. This is more, this is what Ezekiel, Christ is saying through Ezekiel that he would send upon the children of Israel. Okay, now I'm showing you images on the continent for a reason. Okay, give me the next picture. Read that again, Yuri. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Using famine. Read. Though these three men. Now he's going to tell you these three men. Go ahead. Noah. Noah. Daniel. Daniel. And Job. And Job. So he, he puts them all in the same category. So Job could not have been an Edomite who God hates. Everybody understand that? The hell is this? Not only is he black, he compares them with what? Noah and Daniel. Stop listening to stupid black Hebrew Israelite camps who don't know a damn thing. Verse 14 again, please. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. In it is the famine he's talking about. The it is the famine. Go ahead. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. They can only deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Give me that, their righteousness, please. Uh, Deuteronomy 625, please. We're coming right back here, Yuri, so don't drop it. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded So us. that's our righteousness, keeping God's commandments. Go on back to Ezekiel 14. Yes, sir. And now we're in verse 15. Verse 15. If I cause noisome beasts. Now this is number two. Write down number one, famine. Now we're going to deal with noisome beasts, number two. 15 again. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land. And they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts. These wild animals, go ahead. Though these three men were the, in it. Though these three men, who, what three men? Noah, Daniel, and Job, go ahead. Were in it. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They couldn't save their sons. They could not save their daughters. Go ahead. They only shall be delivered but the land shall be desolate. Give me the picture. Put it up on the screen. This was in South Africa. Read that. South, the Jerusalem Post. South African Jew. We cannot sit out today's fight against racism. So in South Africa, this is a South African Jew. Esau sent the do sick the dogs on them. And this is some time ago. But I'm just bringing it up. This was 2020. It's published 2020. But I'm just showing you what the Bible talked about is true on the continent of Africa. Let's go back to Ezekiel 14 now. Read. Yes, sir. Verse 17. Wait, 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 wait. Give me this one more. Come on, Elisha. After that picture. Right. Come on, man. Stay with me. Read that, Yuri. Experience of apartheid. Crescent International Monthly News. So over there in the South Africa, they had, they would sick the dogs on them, just like they did over here. Same thing. Go back to Ezekiel 14, please. And we're in verse 17. Yes, sir. Or if I bring a sword upon that land. Now, a sword means war. If I bring war on the land. Go ahead. And say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it. These three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job. Go ahead. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They can't save their sons. They can't save their daughters. Some of y'all think I'm stressing that. I see the Lord is stressing it. Because some of you think you can save your sons and daughters. No, you can't. Why are they real cute? Like I'm looking at little cute kids right here right now. They're cute. They're adorable. When they get to that age of what age? I'd say around, what do you say, 10? Around 10? And they start making their own little decisions? You're going to see if they're for the Lord or they're for the devil. Okay, go ahead. But they only shall be delivered themselves. Where are you at? Verse 18. The Bible. Read it again. Yes, sir. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. So let's look at some sword. Sword means war. Put it on the screen. This is in Nigeria. The Biafra War in Nigeria. This is an example of the sword. Thousands upon thousands of people were killed during the Biafra Wars. Next one. Look at this one. Read that, Yuri. Five Ghanaians killed in South Africa attack. They set the man on fire. Y'all see him burning alive right there. Read that. Five Ghanaians have been reported dead in South Africa under circumstances prompting questions as to whether the deaths are related to the ongoing xenophobic attacks spreading across the rainbow country. Give me the next picture, Alicia. Go ahead, blow it up. So this is like through, uh, I forgot where this one, it might be the Congo, I'm not sure. But give me the next one. These are examples I'm showing you on the continent of Africa of the sword, which means war. Okay, give me the next one. All right, zoom in, make it bigger. All right, go back to Ezekiel 14. Yes, now sir. we're in verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence into that land. Meaning disease. If I send a pestilence, meaning disease. Go ahead. And pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off, to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. In what? The pestilence. Go ahead. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. Even they, as righteous as they are, could not save son nor daughter. Go ahead. They shall, but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. They can only save their own souls by their righteousness. Give me the pictures. Put it on the screen. 
This is an example of pestilence, okay? Disease running rampant throughout Africa, the continent. Give me the next one. They had to bury a lot of people too, from Ebola to Zika, a lot of different things out there. Esau keep hitting them with, okay? Let's go on back, go on back. Verse 20, what verse are at? 21. Verse 21. But thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments? So God's four sore judgments, write it down. Four sore judgments are famine, beasts, sword, which is war, and pestilence, which is disease. So his four sore judgments, one is famine, two is beast, three is the sword, four is pestilence. Okay, y'all got that? Now, you might say to yourself, self, that's old time in the Bible back then. Let's go to Revelation 6. The revealing of what's to come. Revelation 6. Uh, is it still, verse 7, Yuri? Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. This death is Esau, the so-called white man. Watch this, watch this. Yuri, real quick, I'm going to explain the death. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 5. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5. Start at 4, I like 4. Verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright. <clears throat> oh, God. Come on, man. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. So, this is talking about a particular race of man on the earth. The Bible says his soul which is lifted up. What does it mean lifted up? He lifted himself up as God, as Christ, as the angels. This is your friendly neighborhood white man. Read it again. Behold, his soul which is lifted up. Is not upright in him. You cannot conform him. Go ahead. But the just shall live by his faith. We're going to live by Christ. Come on. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. By philosophy. The wine is philosophy. Real quick, Yuri, you know what I want? In yes, uh, uh, Micah, is it 211? About the wine. 211. Micah, chapter 2 and verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. Walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. Go ahead. Saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine. Prophesy of what? Of wine. So wine represents the spirit of falsehood and lying. Everybody see that? Going back, that's all I want to go back to. Back at 2 and 5. Yes, sir. Verse 5. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. He is a proud man. So that's how you know it's the white man. So he's a proud man. Remember in Obadiah? Give me that real quick. Obadiah of, uh, the, might be verse 2 or 3. The pride of thine heart. Read from verse 1 and give me that part. Obadiah. Verse Start at 1. 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Edom is the so-called white man. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Come on. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. The nations are going to rise up against Edom in battle. Watch this. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Disliked. Thou art greatly despised. Come on, here come. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. The pride of thine heart has deceived you. Now let's go back to her back. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Back to uh, Habakkuk, and you in 2 and 5 again? Yes, sir. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. He is a proud man. Now we know that that proud man is Esau Edom. Go ahead. Neither keep it at home. And he don't stay at home. Go ahead. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. See that? Who enlarges his desire as hell. Wherever he touched down is hell. Go ahead. And is as death. He is as death. God says he is as death. Go ahead. And cannot be satisfied. This man cannot be satisfied. Go ahead. But gathereth unto him all nations, 
and heapeth unto him all people. That's pinpointing America. All nations and kindreds is here in America. Let's go back to Revelation now. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. This is the white man. Death. Go ahead. And hell followed with him. Wherever this man go, hell follows behind him. This is what the Bible says. Go ahead. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Notice, and power was given unto them. The death in hell is talking about a nation of men. And power was given unto them over the fourth part. Put that on the screen. Thank you. The fourth, read that, Yuri. The fourth part of the world, the race to the ends of the earth, and the epic story of the Can you take down that, disc, that thing at the bottom so I can see? I can't read it. The bottom. Yes, thank you. Read again, Yuri. The fourth part of the world, the race to the ends of the earth, and the epic story of the map that gave America its name. By Toby Lester. There's books out on it letting, they know America is the fourth part of the earth. Let's go back to Revelation 6 and 8. One more again. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Over America to do what? To kill with sword. To kill with sword. That's with, one. Write that down. Sword. Go ahead. And with hunger. Hunger. That's famine. Uh-huh. And with death. And with death. Go ahead. That's disease. Go ahead. And with the beasts of the earth. And with the beasts of the earth. It's the same four judgments. So now... Remember, yeah, some of y'all may remember this. Put it on the screen when they were killing Gad on this side of the world, the fourth part of the earth. They were slaughtering and just throwing their bodies into great, op huge open graves. Okay, give me the next picture about the, the uh, World War One. Right, they had us in World One. Thousands upon thousands of our people died during World War One. They like to make believe we didn't exist during World War One, but we did. Give me the next one. This is World War II. Our people fought in World War II, and they put us in concentration camps. They burned us in those in Auschwitz and places like that, but nobody wanted to talk about that. Okay. Give me the next one. You had the Persian Gulf, things like that. Our people was always fighting in America's wars. This is the sword the Bible's talking about. Go ahead. So this is still the, no, go back. The sword, that's the sword. So read it again, Yuri, Revelation 6 and 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. The white man would kill with sword. And with hunger. Now let's see how he kills with hunger. Give me the next one. These are examples of our people being killed with hunger, food shortages. This is America. This is America. Next picture. Zoom in. Zoom in. Now, we ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to escalate. We've been telling y'all that, warning y'all that about this for a long time. This is happening in certain parts of the country. Give me the next picture. Zoom in. Okay. Next one. Nope. Stop it right there. Okay. Go back, Yuri. One more again. Yes, sir. The whole thing? Yes. Yes, sir. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death. And with death. Put that on the screen. This was what happened to our brother Rashim Carter. That's death. White folks killed him. White folks killed him. Okay? Cut his head in. First they said animals attacked him. And did that. And that's, that's a saw. You could tell an, a, a steel instrument or iron instrument did that. Animals don't do that. Okay. Give me the next one. Zoom in. Okay. Now, the reason I started with the first one, because a lot of times, black people, you only say, stop murder by police. The ones that killed Rasheem Carter was not the police. Okay. The ones that killed Ahmaud Arbery were not the police. Okay, many of our people are being killed not just by the police. God tells us it's Esau Edom. 
you get these little fringe groups out here that say, no, it's just the, it's not just the police. They have an ulterior motive. Okay, give me the next one. This is more death. Read that, Yuri. The most dangerous place for an African American is in the womb. Black women don't want to talk about that. She has killed more people, more of her people than anybody on the face of the earth. The black woman. And, and, and this stats out on the Latin woman, but this is just talking about these things. A lot of stats show you how, what the black woman is doing. She has out, she has surpassed the Ku Klux Klan in the murder of her people. Okay. Give me the next one. Black on black violence. You black men out there in gangs, killing, killing one another. You got some Israelite camps the same way, just like this. Black on black crime. They hate the truth. They hate one another. They hate to see Israel raise, rising up in glory, in honor, and respect. They hate that thing. Okay. Yuri, read that again now. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And with the beasts of the earth. Y'all remember this gator bait? During the time of chattel slavery, even a little bit after that, they would take those cute, adorable little kids y'all got, put them by the side of the river with a rope uh, around their uh, torso, so when the alligators came and would eat them and swallow them, they would pull an alligator to shore and kill an alligator to, to make shoes, belts, and hats, and gloves out of leather. Things of that nature. Give me the next one. That's another one. And they made, they made uh, candy out of it. Little African, a dainty morsel, licorice drops. And I remember being young, I would see these things, but I never understood what I was looking at. And my parents, they didn't know either. They couldn't tell me. It wasn't until I came into the truth that I found out what this was all about. Okay. Give me the next one. Babies used as alligator bait in state of Florida. Read that quickly, Yuri. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, 69th, 69th and 5th Avenue, New York, today made public the contents of a dispatch printed in the Louisville, Kentucky Herald of September 23rd stating that colored babies were being used as alligator bait in the vicinity of Chipley, Florida. The colored babies are allowed to play in shallow water with expert riflemen concealed nearby. When the alligator approaches his prey, he is said to be shot by the riflemen. The dispatch states that Florida alligator hunters do not ever miss their targets. The price reported as being paid colored mothers for the use of their babies as alligator bait is said to be too Dollars, two dollars for your baby. You kidding me? You can't make this stuff up. Uh, Alicia, give me the next picture. We're still talking about beasts of the earth. So this is they made jokes out of it. Esau made jokes out of it, made little caricatures, making mockery of our children being put to death by beasts, like the Bible said, on the fall fourth part of the world, fourth part of the earth on this side. Give me the next one. Y'all remember this during the turbulent 60s. They would sick their dogs on us. They would sick their canine dogs on us during the civil rights movement. Okay, this is what the Bible's talking about. Give me the next image. Zoom in on that. That's right, that's over here. That's in, over here in Atlanta. Look what happened to a young lady. Give me the next picture. They let the dog out on her. Dog tore her black behind up. Tore her up. Okay, not only that, but they used beasts for other things. Let me show you that. Give me the next picture. They use beasts to create the SARS uh, vac uh, sickness, the pestilence, okay? They use DNA from animals and splice it together with human DNA to create these diseases. Hey, give me that TikTok video. Give me that video. Bear with us, bear with us. I'm showing you how to use these animals for disease. Yep. Come on. Pay, a pay, pay attention. Understand how to use a drug or a supplement or nutritional um, more Wait, stop it um, favorably in stop susceptible populations. Stop it. This is Judy Mikovits. Mikovits, how do you say her name? 
She used to work with Dr. Anthony Fauci. When she first blew his spot up, he had her arrested. She went to jail for several years. Five years, thank you. Now she got out, they took, and she started to expose the AIDS. She said, I helped, not me, but she said, I helped create the AIDS uh, disease with Fauci and a whole bunch of um, scientists. Ebola, she put it all out there. They took all her YouTube videos down, every last one of them. They took a medical license, everything from this woman, okay? Not that she loved our people, but she wanted to expose the evil that she was a part of with Anthony Fauci. So go back. So now she's talking about this latest thing. Go back to the beginning of that video. Understand why something's not working. There's a reason. Understand how to use a drug or a supplement or nutritional um, more um, favorably in susceptible populations. This is what my entire life is natural products, curing and preventing cancer. So uh, hydroxychloroquine is a vaccine. Tony Fauci wrote it himself in a paper in 20, 2005. Um, Tony Fauci wrote it himself again in 2015. Hydroxychloroquine stopped the deadly Ebola outbreak that Tony Fauci released from Fort Detrick in the summer of 2014, as you were saying at the opening this show during the Obama administration, to cover up the fact that um, of the movie Vaxxed, of the, of the confection of the CDC employee, William Thompson, who confessed that they'd cover up that MMR given to um, little black, um, Hispanic, and Native American boys, boys of color, before the year they were three years old, literally giving MMR, three RNA viruses in a single vaccine, giving that shot before the uh, uh, little black boys were three years old. They had two to four times the more the risk of getting um, autism, a neurodevelopment disease, cancer in their parents, in the military, hormone driven cancers. We understood the mechanisms. We knew the biomarkers. They've covered them up forever. And so the Ebola that was released, murdering 21,000 innocent uh, people in Sierra Leone, um, people of color um, was released from Fort Detrick. It was similar to, and, and they're not released into the air. They're shipped in little vials in cell lines. They're called vaccines. They're fermented in, in large fermenters. This is what we describe, the nitty gritty details, how the sausage is made. You know, that's what I do. I make drugs. I make natural products into therapies. And yet the industry, the oncology industry, push is these deadly drugs just as every other part of of the medical all praises all praises so now give me second as your 16 and verse 17 so y'all heard it for yourself you heard it for yourself so that's the prophecy of revelation 6 verse 7 and 8 second edges chapter 16 and verse 17 woe is me woe is me who will deliver me in those days? So the prophet Ezra said, who will deliver me in those days? Letting you know he's going to be back. Watch this. Read on. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. Go ahead. The beginning of famine. The beginning of famine. And great death. Great death. The beginning of wars. Wars. And the powers shall stand in fear. And the powers shall stand in fear. Go ahead. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? What shall I do when these evils come? Read. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. See that? Behold, famine, plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. It's the same four brothers. It's the same four sisters. Go ahead. But... For all these things. But for all these things. They shall not turn away from their wickedness. But for all this, they shall not turn away from their wickedness. So the Lord has smitten our people with uh, famine, plague, tribulation, things of that nature. But then he says, for all this, we will not turn away. Read it again, Yuri. 
But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, uh-huh. nor be always mindful of the scourges. Like a lot of us forgot about the 60s with the canine dogs and all that. Ah, we forgot about it. We see them, the canines attacking there. We forget about it. COVID-19 just happened. We've already forgotten about it. Many of us went back to eating garbage. You know who you are. Read, watch. Verse 21. Behold, vittles shall be so good cheap upon earth. You say, oh, yeah, Walmart, Costco's, everything's cheap on the earth. Everything's cheap. The Bible's talking about our people. Go ahead. That they shall think themselves to be in good case. A lot of you think you're good now. Oh, it's past. It's past. Go ahead. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. And even then shall what? Evils grow upon earth. Read. Sword. Sword. Famine. Famine. And great confusion. Wow, read. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. Uh huh. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Oh, wow. So the Lord got it all laid out for us. And that goes right back to Revelation 6 and 8. So many of us are in this truth playing games. We're playing games with the prophecies God has laid out for us. Okay. You do yourself and your children, if you have any, a disservice. Let's go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Where are we at, Yuri? James chapter 5. Let's start at verse 7. James chapter 5 and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So all of us, men and women, let us all be patient for the coming of the Lord. Go ahead. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. The husbandman is the man that plants crops. It says, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Go ahead. And hath long patience for it. And he has long patience. He plant, plants seed today. He got to wait till that particular season comes for that seed to sprout and grow. Go ahead. Until he received the early and latter rain. Until he received the early and latter rain, meaning the early crops at the beginning of the season and the crops at the end of the season. Go ahead. Be ye also patient. So James is telling us we got to be patient like that husbandman. We got to be patient just like that. Go ahead. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now see that? For the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Comes near. Understand that thing. Go ahead. Grudge not one against another. Grudge not. The root of a grudge is hatred. The root of a grudge is hatred. You got many Israelite camps who have a grudge against Israel united in Christ. Not that we've done anything to them, but because God is showing us favor and not them. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Oh, y'all are getting the audience. Y'all are getting the people. I'm against you. Let's hate. I hate them. Let's set up camp right next to them. Let's do something evil against them. Read it again. Grudge not one against another. So, brothers, we can't roll like that. We are the sons and daughters of God. We can't have grudges again. we got to understand that those are our brothers. Those are our sisters. Okay, read it again. Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Lest you be what? Condemned. These camps that have grudges against us for no reason will be condemned by God. Can I have a bomb? You got four? They ain't working. Read it again, Yuri. Read it again. Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. When you hold grudges, brothers, sisters, you will be condemned. That go for husband and wife, too. Okay? It'll start there. Actually, it'll start when you're single and you're in the congregation. You holding grudges, you will be condemned. Brothers and sisters, y'all, when you get married, you have a grudge against your spouse, you will be condemned. Israelite camp, you have a grudge against another camp. You will be condemned. Thank you, Deacon. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Read it again. Read it again. Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. The Lord is the judge. He standeth before the door. Go ahead. Take, my brethren, the prophets. Who have spoken in the name of the Lord. So now you got to take the prophets. Consider them who have spoken and prophesied in the name of the Lord. Go ahead. For an example of suffering, affliction, 
and of patience. Ah, oh, for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. Like who? Like the forefather Job. Read on. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. See that? He gives you an example in case you couldn't think of one. He says, you have heard of the patience of Job. Go ahead. And have seen the end of the Lord. And you saw the end of the Lord, what the Lord did at the end. We're going to touch on that. Go ahead. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So we got to remember that in this truth. Remember Job, brothers and sisters, how the Lord was very merciful and pitiful upon Job. Okay. From there, give me Romans 5. Here's more example. Romans 5 and 3. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And not only so. And not only so. But we glory in tribulations also. So we glory in tribulations also. Why? Why would somebody, why would Christ say that through the prophet Paul? Read it again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Why? Knowing. Knowing what? That tribulation worketh patience. Ah, that's why. Tribulation teaches us patience. We all lack patience. Like to be like that husbandman who plants his crops today. He got to wait to the end of the season for the, for the crop to grow up. We got to be like that in the truth. We don't have that. We want it now. We want it today. The Lord says, you got to learn patience. So in order for you to learn patience, brother, sister, you got to go through tribulation. Read it again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Uh-huh. And patience experience. And, ex and patience teaches us experience. A lot of you got experience in the world, but the Lord don't care about that. He wants to know about your experience in this truth. What have you done for the Lord in this truth? Where's your tribulation in this truth? Where's your patience in this truth? Where's your experience in this truth? Go ahead. And patience experience. Mm -hmm. And experience Hope and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because once your hope is built up, you will not be ashamed. Go ahead. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts mm -hmm. by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So the Spirit of the Lord gives us that Holy Spirit, okay, is shed abroad in our hearts that we learn patience, experience, hope, and all that comes through tribulation. There's a purpose behind tribulation, there was a purpose behind Job's tribulation. From there, give me Acts 14, 22. Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Confirming the souls of the disciples. So our job is to confirm your souls as well. Go ahead. And exhorting them. And our job is to exalt every man and every woman in this truth. Go ahead. To continue in the faith. And we exhort you to continue in this faith. Do not leave this truth. Don't let it be another 2018 and all them people now are trying to come back. You don't want to be in that number. Okay, read it again. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. See that? We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because tribulation teaches us what? Patience. And patience teaches us what? Experience. And experience teaches us what? Hope. There's a domino effect for the tribulation. It's a building process. Okay, everybody understand that? Give me Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You hear what the Messiah said? It says, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Endure what? Jump up above it and start at verse 7. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Guess what, brothers? Guess what, sisters? That falls under what? Sword that we were reading earlier. Sword. War. Go ahead. And there shall be famines. Oh, didn't we read about famines going to come? Christ is talking about the same four judgments. Go ahead. And pestilences. And pestilence. That's disease. It's going to cover this place. We've experienced it in like a woman in travail. Here a little, there a little. Now the disease of come and gone. We good now. We could go back to being niggas. No. No, you better wake up. So the same thing Ezekiel said. The same thing Ezra said. The same thing John the Revelator said. 
is the same thing Christ is saying here. Read it again, Yuri. Read it again. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Read. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Come on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. So the men and women in this truth, it says they shall deliver us up to be afflicted and shall kill us. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's why there's a campaign against us, saying they're a hate group. They're racist. They murdered people in Jersey. Lie, lie, lie. They're building a campaign to stop the sons and daughters of God. Come on. And then shall many be offended. Some of you are going to be offended at this. Go ahead. And shall betray one another. Some of you are going to betray us. We know that. Go ahead. And shall hate one another. And some of you are going to turn and hate us. Go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise. Those are, your pro those are your preachers. Those are your imams, your popes, your reverends. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. They're going to go on a, dece a deceptful campaign. Go ahead. And because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Some of you are going to stop keeping God's commandments. You're going to see sin on the, on the rise. Watch this. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. E endure what? Sword, famine, uh, 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 um, pestilence. And what else was the other one? Come on, help me out here. Beast. We got to endure that. That's what Christ said from verse 7 down. The affliction that's going to come. Christ said, if he that endures to the end, you're going to be saved. So you got to go through. That's what Acts 14, said. We shall through much tribulation, what? Enter the kingdom. Everybody understand that? Give me 2 Timothy 4 and 3. Second Timothy, I'm sorry, three and th uh, 2 and 3, I apologize. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Wait, wait, wait. Thou therefore endure, endure, endure hardness. What hardness? Sword, famine, pestilence. What was the other one? I keep forgetting. Beasts. And beasts. <laughs> Those four saw judgments, which also includes the, the afflictions that's going to come. Read it again. Thou therefore endure hardness. Hardness. Stop. Christ said, he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Read it again, Yuri. Thou therefore endure hardness. So the hardness is that tribulation. Okay. Read. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because we are good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. No man that warreth. No man that warreth. Entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Give me 2 Ezra 6.25. 2 Ezra 6.25. 2 Ezra 6.25. 2 Ezra 6. Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 25. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. Wait, 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 wait. Read it again. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. Whosoever shall remain from all these that I have told thee shall escape. Go ahead. And see my salvation and the end of your world. And the end of your world. There's a remnant chosen that's going to live to the end. Everybody understand that? He said, you're going to see the salvation, the end of this world and God's salvation. Give me chapter 13 of Esdras, verse 23. Second Esdras, chapter 13 and verse 23. He that shall endure the peril in that time. See that? He that shall, what's that word, Yuri? Endure. 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 Read it again. He that shall endure the peril in that time. Another word for peril is tribulation. Read it again, Yuri. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the almighty so to see that they that have fallen into danger that danger is the tribulation of war famine beast and pestilence tribulation read again yuri he that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself they that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the almighty now watch this watch this watch this give me ecclesiastes two and one
Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So you men and women, you will come to serve the Lord. It says prepare thy soul for temptation. Let's see what that temptation is. Read on. Set thy heart aright. And constantly endure. Constantly what? Endure. 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 Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Don't leave this truth. Go ahead. Cleave unto him and depart not away, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see that part? That thou mayest be increased at thy last end? Come on. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Listen good to this. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Take Go ahead. Cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. That's what Romans 5 and 3. It said we glory in tribulation. Now, uh, Sirach is saying take it cheerfully. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. See that part? It said and be patient. Be patient when you are changed to a low estate. When you ain't got nothing. When your source of income is gone. Your business is, is ruined, destroyed. Okay? Like we just read about in Job earlier. Everybody understand that? Read that again. What verse you at? Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Mm -hmm. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire. Gold, you men, women, you are the gold God is looking at. He's trying you. He must try you. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men. And acceptable men. In the furnace of adversity. In the furnace of adversity. Now. Let's talk about that a moment. Only acceptable men, acceptable women are chosen in the furnace of adversity. You're not just going to tell the Lord, oh, I believe, and that's it. No. God says, I got to try you. I got to try your faith. I got to put you through tribulation. Read verse 1 again. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Jump down to verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That, that temptation is the adversity we're reading about. That temptation in verse 1 is the adversity in verse 5. Okay, so read verse 5 again. For gold is tried in the fire. So you are the gold. You men, you women, God wants to make you into gold. But he says in order to do that, he got to try us. Read it again. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Give me Isaiah 1. Watch this. And verse 25, I believe. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross. Can we look up that word dross? D-R-O-S-S. -S. God said he will turn his hand upon us and purely purge away our dross. D-R-O-S-S. -S. I want the meaning. Put it on the screen. Dross. Something regarded as worthless. There's something in you men and women that's worthless. There's something in all of us worthless. Read. Rubbish. R there's rubbish in us. Go ahead. Similar words. Debris. Debris. Chaff. Chaff. Draft. Mm -hmm. Detrius. Read. Floatsome and jetsome. Read. Rubbish. Uh -huh. Trash. Garbage. There's garbage in us. There's garbage in us. Read that foreign matter part. Foreign matter. Dregs or mineral waste. In particular, scum. There's scum. Formed on the surface of molten metal. Mm. So when we go back to Isaiah 125 again. And I will turn my hand upon thee. And purely purge away thy dross. Purge away the garbage within us. And take away all thy tin. And take away all our tin. And I will restore thy judges. Wait, 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 wait. Read that verse again. Read the verse again. And I will turn my hand upon thee. And purely purge away thy dross. Mm -hmm. And take away all thy tin. And take away all thy tin. Let me, hold on, Yuri. I want to look at something. I want to see something. Bear with me. Hey, get, hold your finger at uh, Mark 7.25. I'm just looking at something. I'm just looking at something. Mm. So, read Mark 7.21 real quick. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out from within, 
out of the heart of men. Now he's going to break down the garbage that's in us. Go ahead. Proceed evil thoughts. We got evil thoughts in us. Adulteries. Adulteries in For us. Fornication. Fornication thoughts is in us. Murders. Murders is in us. Thefts. Thefts is in us. Covetousness. Covetousness is in us. Wickedness. Wickedness is in us. Deceit. Deceit is in us. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is in us. An evil eye. An evil eye that's hatred for your brother is in us. Blasphemy. Blasphemy is in us. Pride. Pride is in us. Foolishness. Foolishness is in us. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's the garbage. Go back to Isaiah 1, 25 again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. Now we know what the dross and the tin is. The dross and the tin are those evil thoughts we have. The evil eye we have one for another. The thoughts of adultery, the thoughts of fornication, the lasciviousness, the hatred. All of those things is the dross and the ten. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. So God wants to make us to be like the judges at the beginning. Go ahead. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Uh -huh. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So we want to be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Let's go on back to Sirach, Ecclesiasticus 2. Again. And you were in verse 5, Yuri? Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, uh -huh. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And acceptable men are only chosen in the furnace of adversity. Everybody understand that? So now, write this word down. What we've read, that will either make you or break you. I wrote, I said that. T-H-A-T. That will either make you or break you. What is that? The T stands for tribulation. The H stands for hardness. The A stands for adversity. And the T stands for temptation. That will either make us or break us. Thank you. Thank, thank, I appreciate you. There's a delay there. But do everybody understand that? I see the hand. Tribulation. Hardness. Adversity and temptation. That is an acronym that means us going through that will either make us or break us. Some brothers, some sisters have been broken when they've gone through tribulation, hardness, adversity, temptation. They're gone. We don't see them no more. Some are on YouTube cursing us out like it's our fault. Of what they went through. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. The Lord said he's going to try you. He meant that thing. Okay, give me Matthew 24, 13 again. Just going to jump back there. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now I'm going to say something to y'all. Men, women, I want y'all to listen to something. What Christ said, he said to endure. To endure your tribulation, your hardness, your adversity and temptation has nothing to do with motivation. Write that down. It has nothing to do with motivation. Everyone, they always say, Bishop, how do you stay motivated? I'm not always motivated. Nobody wakes up every day motivated. Woo! Put that on the screen. Who in the hell wakes up like that? Nobody wakes up always motivated unless you're on drugs. You have good days. You have bad days. Give me that next picture. Next picture. Yeah, blow that up. Motivation is a driving force. You don't have that every day unless you are a super natural being, nobody is always motivated every day from sunup to sundown. Impossible. Enduring has nothing to do with being motivated 24-7. But it has everything to do with discipline. 
Like I say, I'm not always motivated, but I'm always disciplined. That's how every man and every woman must be. Give me that in Sirach 1814. Put that on the screen. Self-discipline, the number one trait that is essential to accomplishing goals. We want to make it to the end, so we need discipline. We want to endure to the end. We need discipline. Give me that, Uri Ecclesiasticus 18 and verse 14. Yes, sir. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline. God has mercy on them that receive discipline. Go ahead. And that diligently seek after his judgment. And that diligently seek after his judgment. Put that on the screen. Okay. Discipline is that's what we need, brothers, sisters. That's what we need. Okay. Oh, I, 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 I don't care about depression. It's too much in this Bible for us to be depressed. We must be disciplined. Sure, you might not wake up today and be, Whoa, I'm going out to camp. You might wake up and be like, I got to go out to camp. You better go out and do it. You might not wake up and go, oh, I'm going to eat my diet food today. Lettuce and tomatoes. But you better eat it. You might not wake up and want to lift weights, do a sit up, but you got to do it. Just like you got to wake up and take care of them, them children you got that make noise all the time. It's called discipline, okay? It's called discipline. The hell is going on here? Give me Job 27. Job 20. No. Uh, Peter, 1 and 10. Is it 2 Peter 1 and 10 about diligence? Give me that one first. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. Give diligence. To make your calling and election sure. To make your calling and election sure. You know what that diligence is? Endure. 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 God don't care about your motivation. He don't give a damn about that. You just best to endure. That's what he's telling every man and every woman. That's what he's telling the bishops, deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, men, women, all of us. Endure. Everybody understand that? I know I stepped on some toes. Some of y'all looking at me strange. It's all right. Job 27. Job. What time is it? Job 27. You, are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay, put it on the screen. Don't wait for me to say put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. I just read the scripture. <sighs> That's what we got to do. That's What was that, Yuri? Second Peter? Job 27. No, no, no. The one about diligence. What one and ten. Second Peter 1 and 10? Yes, sir. That's what we needed. Diligence, which is endure, which is endure. So, Job 27 and verse 1. Job chapter 27 and verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable. Wait, what? Job what? Continued his parable. What I want you brothers, you up and coming teachers to understand, Job's life, although it was real, it was a parable for us, the nation of Israel. So that what? When we go through this captivity, we can endure to the end and not give up. Read that again. Moreover, Job continued his parable. Now here's a, give me that in Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea. Chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. Job I, was a prophet. Read it again. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes. And used similitudes. By the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. So Job's life was a similitude for us. Many of the things he spoke, the things that his friends spoke, is a similitude for us in his last days. Everybody understand that? Back to Job 27. One, one more again. Job chapter 27 and verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said. Now we're going to jump down to verse 7 just for time's sake. Just for time's sake. Go ahead. Verse 7. Let my enemy be as the wicked. You see when it says let my enemy be as the wicked? We have enemies against this gospel. That's our very own people. I want you to understand that. The Bible, Job says, let mine enemy be as the wicked. Now we know who the, give me that who the wicked is in Malachi 1 and 4. Here's who the wicked is. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. 
Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people. The people, the people, the people. Uh, not the man. It says the people. Against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. That's the entire race. So when we go back to Job 27 and verse 7. Let my enemy be as the wicked. Let my enemy be as the wicked. So that's men and women of our own race who despise this gospel, who hate this truth, who want to stop this truth, who want to stop us from preaching the gospel, from preaching and teaching the gospel. Let them be as the wicked. Read. And he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. And he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. Go ahead. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? That's the proof. The enemy that Job is talking about is the hypocrites of our people. Read again, verse 8. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained when God taketh away his soul. When God, when he hath gained when God taketh away his soul. Y'all don't remember Christ saying that same thing? Get that in Mark 8, 36. When he hath gained when God takes away his soul. Mark chapter 8 and verse 36. For whosoever shall say, excuse me, for what shall it profit a man? What shall it profit a man, man, woman, boy, girl? If he shall gain the whole world. If you gain everything in this world, fame, fortune, you gain it all. Go ahead. And lose his own soul. But you lose your soul. What does it profit you? What has it profited you? Because the end is coming. The end is near. Sure, you got your three billion dollars rich. You got women that come around you, snap your fingers. They do your nails, they do your hair, they do everything for you. You got fame everywhere. Everybody knows you. Read it again. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? See what Christ said there? That's some of our brothers and sisters in the entertainment world. They have gained the world. They've gained what? Fame and fortune. Women, they've gained whatever they wanted. They can get it. And they will not stand for the truth of this Bible. They will not stand or support the sons and daughters of God Almighty prophets, the Israelites. They won't do it. But at the end, when they lose their soul, they're going to think back on this message right here, this class that they're listening to right now. Go back to Job. Job chapter 27 and verse 8. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained when God taketh away his soul? Read. Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will God hear the cry of the hypocrite? The Israelite man, the Israelite woman, who know that they're Israelite but won't stand for this truth one iota. Give me that in Proverbs 1, 24 to 28. What will you do when trouble comes? Will God hear your cry? Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. Because I have called and ye refused. The Lord said he called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. God said, he, how does he stretch out his hand? Through us, the prophets, the teachers. He said, I stretched out my hand and what? And ye, excuse me. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. And no man regarded. I had to hell with you Israelites. Go ahead. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. God's counsel is the Bible. You set the Bible at, as nothing. Go ahead. And with none of my reproof. And you didn't want God's laws at all. Go ahead. I also will laugh at your calamity. So God does have a sense of humor. The God of heaven and earth said, I'm going to laugh too. You laughed at my sons and daughters. You laughed at the prophets. Well, I'm going to laugh too. Read that again, Yuri. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. I will mock when your fear cometh. Go ahead. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh. Cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Cometh upon you. Go ahead. Then shall they call upon me. Then you're going to call on the Lord. Go ahead. But I will not answer. But the Lord of heaven and earth will not answer. Go ahead. They shall seek me early. You're going to seek God early. But they shall not find but me. But they shall not find him. Go ahead. For they that hated for knowledge. That, read it right. For that they hated knowledge. Because you hated the Bible. Go ahead. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. And you didn't choose the fear of the Lord. Go back to uh, Job 27. Read that again, verse 9. Verse 9. 
Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Come on. Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Go ahead. Will he always call upon God? Uh -huh. I will teach you by the hand of God. Job said, I will teach you by the hand of God. Go ahead. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. He said, and I'm not, I'm not going to conceal it. I'm not going to hide it either. Job 6 and 10, please. Job chapter 6 and verse 10. Then should I yet have comfort. Yea, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. This is why we, take, we teach y'all everything. Everything I know, y'all know. What the deacons and the bishops know, y'all know. Y'all learning everything. We're not concealing nothing. Men and women online. Some of you watch, you take our classes, refurbish it, and give honor to your dumb elders. That's all right. It's all glory to the Lord. Okay, but we know who you are. And the Lord, know, and the Lord does too. Back to Job 27. Verse 11, Job 27, verse 11. Mm -hmm. I will teach you by the hand of God, that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Come on. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? Why are you in the midst of lies? Why are you deceitful? Go ahead. This is the portion of a wicked man. Now he goes to the portion of a wicked man. Go ahead. This is the portion of a wicked man. With God uh -huh. and the heritage of oppressors. Now we're talking about white folks. And the nations. Read it again. Read it again. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. Now, remember what it said in verse 7. Read 7 again, so in case we forgot. Let my enemy be as the wicked. Never forget that. The same judgment Esau is going to get these nations, our wicked brothers and sisters are going to get the same judgment. I hope everybody understand that. Let me give you an example. Let me think of one real quick. Yes, that's good. put it on the screen, man. They're gonna get the same job. Hey, uh, Elisha, not Elisha, not Elisha, Yuri, sir. Give me Joe, no, I'm sorry, Psalms 50 about when I source the one about adultery in Psalms 50. I forgot what verse it is. It's around 16, 17, 18. And it's talking about Esau. Watch this. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 18. Okay. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Y'all see that? Now that's about Esau. You have, you consented with a thief and you have been partaker with adulterers. Imagine this, brothers. You on the street teaching. The white man has committed adultery, he has raped our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our daughters, from chattel slavery on up. Right, right, brothers? But now what about you, who have made our daughters into whores? You have slept from woman to woman to woman and ain't take care of not one. You getting the same judgment. You men understand that. You Israelites online, I hope you understand that too. You're gonna get the same judgment. Yeah, I went, oh, oh, and they always find a woman being wicked. Oh, she's wicked. That's why I left her. You left 15 women, and they was all wicked, brother. Did these women even know that they were Israelites? No. She's your portion, right? So when Esau gets his judgment, you can put it on the screen. When his judgment come, you wicked Israelites going to get the same judgment. Death. I hope you all understand that. Let's go on back to Job 27 now. Yes, sir. What verse are we at? Verse 13. Uh -huh. This is the portion of the wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors which they shall receive of the Almighty. Give me Proverbs 24, 1 and 2. Proverbs 24, 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 1. Be not thou envious against evil men. Brothers, sisters, never be evil against, e never be envious against evil men. Go ahead. Neither desire to be with them. Neither desire to be with them. You understand that? You see evil, and they got riches, fame, and fortune. Read it again. Read it again. Be not thou envious against evil men. Neither desire to be with them. Uh -huh. For their heart studieth destruction, 
and their lips talk of mischief. I hope you men understand that. You women too. I hope everyone listening to the sound of my voice understands that. Go back to Job 27, and we are in verse 14. Yes, sir. If his children be multiplied. If his... If the wicked's children be multiplied, it is for the sword. It is for the sword, meaning death. Go ahead. And his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. And his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Give me Psalms 109. Give me Psalms 109. And we're going to start. Let me look at it first. Let me see where I want to start. Let's start at verse 1. Psalms chapter 109 and verse 1. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. That's what David prayed. That's what we're praying to. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. Come on. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against See me. See that? The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. Just as David said in this psalm, so do we say today. You got wicked Edomites like the ADL, the SPLC, the Canary Mission. Got their mouths open against us. Then you got wicked of our own race, our own people, speaking against us, lying, saying we bring guns to reservations. We're killing men. We're killing women. Read it again. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against uh -huh. me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They speak against us with a lying tongue. Watch this. Come on. They can pass me about. Also, with words of hatred. Words of hatred. Words of hatred they compass us about. Come on. And fought against me without a cause. And they fight against us for no reason. Brothers have been at camp like today in Kansas City. I'm sorry. They at camp. You got wicked black nigger Israelites set up right there next to them. Then start a fist fight. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. Read it again. They compass me about. Also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Without a cause. Just because we get a crowd and you don't? You want to fight us physically? Fight us? Are you kidding me? How about repent and pray for the Holy Spirit, brother? How about that? How about keep God's laws? Envy and jealousy. You can't make this stuff up. Read on. Verse 4. For my love, they are my adversaries. For my love, they are my adversaries. Go ahead. But I give myself unto prayer. But brothers, sisters, we're going to give ourselves to prayer. We ask the Lord for mercy upon these wicked Negro Israelite camps. Be merciful upon them, O Father. They know not what they do. Come on. And they have rewarded me evil for good. And they rewarded me evil for good. And hatred for my love. And reward us hatred for my love. Go ahead. Set thou a wicked man over him. I want y'all to see what David is saying here. See what David is saying is set thou a wicked man over him. Go ahead. And let Satan stand at his right hand. And let's say if they can't repent, this is what's going to happen. Satan is going to take over them 100%. Just as he did Cain. Okay, everybody understand what I'm saying? Give me that in uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9. The white man going to roll with them. Actually, give me Genesis 4, 7 first, then 2 Thessalonians. And we ain't out to hurt nobody. We're just going to subdue you. Now, if we wanted to stomp a, a brother out, we would have stomped him out. We didn't stomp him out. Just subdue, brother. Just hold him. Hold him. That's it. Don't hurt him. Do not hurt the brother. That's how we get down. Everybody understand that? Israelite and Christ, we're not out there to harm our people. Okay? But if you bring it, we're going to bring the fire. We're going to hold you down. Read that. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? This is what God told Cain. If you do well, meaning keep God's law, won't you be accepted of me? Go ahead. And if thou doest not well. But if you choose to be rebellious, Cain. Sin, if you blacks choose to be rebellious, go ahead. Sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at your door. And unto thee. And unto thee, Satan. Shall be his desire. All his desire is going to be unto Satan. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 now. Here's the precept. And guess what? We got the footage of all everything that we always got footage. So when you're on Facebook, don't listen to anybody. I want to give a shout out to my wicked brother who did this. No, we got the footage. Bishop, do you mind if I say something? Oh, go ahead. Being that you're bringing that out, uh, you got that what I just sent you? 
in that group. Did you get that? It's been online requests. So go back and read that again. I want you to read verse, verse 3. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. You want Psalms? Or you I'm Psalms. Sorry. Psalms yes, 109 sir. verse uh, 3. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 109 verse 3. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. So you hear what Bishop is bringing out, what the Lord is showing us to bring out. They come against us. They compass me about with words of hatred. We don't go back and forth with these camps. We're not out to injure anybody. Our job and our enemy is the other nations. Yet our brothers will compass us to come and fight and try to kill us. For what? We're not trying to fight you. We don't owe you money. We're not after your women. It is jealousy, hatred. And the men that you out there, you simple men out there that's doing this, your own leaders will not come out and do the same thing. You men are being fooled and deceived. Your own leaders from these different camps will not do it. GMS, Tahar never did it. Yahana never did it. Will not approach the camp, but you men follow this. And look, I want, you, I want you to read what these men are saying so everybody be aware. This is the glory. Read that out. This is Isa Araya, ISUPK. All I'm going to say is shout out Captain Dagal Gabar and his mighty warriors. See y'all soon. The Lord is going to judge you. If you men come to us and bring any harm to God's prophet, God is going to kill you. I'm, that's warning from God. This is love you hearing. I want you to read what they women are talking about. This is Miriam Yahawada. Shout out to N.O. Cowards KC. Captain Dagal Gabar for coming down. Camp leader, officer of 5,000, Malak Ban Yahawada. Officer of 500, Alahayasha Yahawada. God should have spit in your face, woman. You in the middle of men's business. You don't know your place. You don't understand how God is dealing. And shout out, no cowards. Won't you go out there and go on the streets right there and go against Esau? That's destroying all people, kills the streets. You're not involved in none of that stuff. But you come against God's people, God's anointed. When you men was out there going to court against Esau, we praise God for you. You a damn demon, dumb woman. Give me the next one. Oh. Check, check. And it says, they went to war for the Lord. Post that, that comment. It says, they went to war for the Lord. Post it up. Not that one, the, the, the comment we just had. That one. Yeah, they went to war for the Lord. No, they didn't. No. They went and tried to set up on top of our camp where we was already teaching at. Notice IUIC does that nowhere on earth. We will not set up next to nobody. We teach the word of God and where brothers is at, guess what? Okay, y'all teaching over there, we're going to teach over here. That ain't going to war for the Lord. <laughs> You're trying to cause division. You're trying to stop the word of God from coming out. We said long ago, we will not be shaken. We ain't going to be stopped. We ain't going to be moved off of no corner. We're going to teach the words of God. Right. And nobody's going to stop that. Let me tell you something. Like Bishop was saying, you can clap, give the Lord a hand. This is God. God got the victory. The word went out regardless. Right. And as Bishop said earlier, if we really wanted to, we could have hurt those men. But our teacher, our general, he don't teach. No, don't hurt nobody. If not, if you got to defend yourself, fine. But there's all brothers. We don't want to bring no harm to no next man. We're not there. We're subduing and wait for police to come deal with you all. Let me tell you something so you understand. There's only one general in this army, God's army on earth. That's Bishop Nathaniel. Yes. It ain't Johanna. Johanna ain't the general. I'm telling you. He ain't no general. Because ain't no general will put his men in harm's way for, non for no nonsense. No general would do that to his man. To send his men out there on false missions that would not get them the kingdom of God. Come on, give me the last one. This is supposed to be one of their great, one of their great, great captains. They will forever be P to me. Where's the edification? Where's God's word come out? Where's the scripture for that? Man, you don't you ain't filled with the Spirit of God. We don't talk about those men like that. But listen, you can cause what you want, but you what you won't do is move us off them corners. That's what you want to do. Use your words. Choose your words wisely because we ain't going nowhere. Clowns, let me tell you something. 
Listen, the Bible does not justify your behavior. Your actions are not according to the words of God. And what you're getting today is a warning from God. That's what you get. That's what Bishop is bringing out. He's warning you. God is going to judge you. You will inherit the same judgment as Esau if you do not stop and repent. Period. Exactly. All praises. All praises. So we and we want to give a shout out to Captain Horeb and the men for not hurting them. That's that's discipline. That's, that's a mighty discipline. captain right there. Young man, that's what you call a captain. Exactly. Officer of 5,000. You don't got 5,000 men. You got an officer of 5,000. Right. You clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Officer Yuri, where we at? You call 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, sir? Okay, read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. Even him... Whose coming is after the working of Satan. Even him, so about Esau, whose coming is after the working of Satan. Go ahead. With all power. With all power. And signs. And signs. And lying wonders. And lying wonders. Now jump down to verse, is it 10? Where it says about pleasure. Verse 12. Okay, 12. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. Now this verse talking about our people. That all our people might be damned. Go ahead. Who, who believe not the truth. Who believe not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're going to get the same judgment. I hope everybody understand that. You're not going to say, oh, the white man's the devil, but you're breaking commandments, you're attacking God's people, you're going to get the same judgment. Back to Psalms. 109 and 6 again. Psalms chapter 109 and verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. And let his prayer become sin. See that? And let his prayer become sin. Come on. Let his days be few. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Come on. Let his children be fatherless. Read. And his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds. Let his children be continually bums. Go ahead. And beg. And what? And beg. And beg. Go ahead. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Come on. Let the extortioner catch all that he had. Mm -hmm. And let the strangers spoil his labor. Read. Let there be none to extend mercy unto let him. Let there be none to extend mercy to him. Go ahead. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Uh -huh. Let his posterity be cut off. Let his posterity be cut off. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. You see that? Let their name be blotted out. Come on. Let them be before the Lord continually. Read again. Let them be before the Lord continually. What verse are you at? Did you read 14? Yes, sir. Read again. I like 14. I like the way it sounds. No, okay. I didn't, sir. I apologize. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. Go ahead. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. And let not the sin. See, the, the white woman ain't going to escape either. Let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. I mean, it's we're always. What, what's that woman that helped kill Emmett Till? What's her name? Carolyn? Carolyn Devil? No. <laughs> well, that's good enough. It said, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Go ahead. Verse 15. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Cut off their memory from the earth. Go ahead. Because that he, because that he remembered not to show mercy. This man remembered not to show mercy. But persecuted the poor and needy but, man. But persecuted the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the poor and needy man. Go ahead. That he might even slay the broken in heart. That's Israel, to slay the broken in heart. That's us. We are the broken in heart. Back to Job. 27. Back to Job 27 and verse 15. Job chapter 27 and verse 15. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Now read 14 again, 14 and 15 together. Verse 14. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death. And his widows shall not weep. Get the precept to that in Isaiah 14 and 20. Here's the precept. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 20. 
thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. The white man's not going to be joined with other nations in burial. Go ahead. Because thou hast destroyed thy land. This white man has destroyed his land. And slain thy people. And he's slain his citizens. Go ahead. The seed of evildoers. What is it calling them? Evildoers. The seed of evildoers. Go ahead. Shall never be renowned. Shall never be remembered. Go ahead. Prepare slaughter for his children. See that? Prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers. For the sins of their fathers. Go ahead. That they do not rise. That they do not rise. Nor possess the nor land. Nor possess the land. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. Back to Job. Job is saying the same thing that David said in Psalms, saying the same thing that Paul said in Thessalonians, saying the same thing that John said in Revelation, saying the same thing. Back to Job 27, what verse we at? I read verse 15 again. Go ahead. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep, mm -hmm. though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay. See, go ahead. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. See that? He may prepare it, but the just, Israel, shall put it on. Whatever this white man has prepared in terms of wealth and honor, where it's all being set up for us. Everybody understand that? That's what it's saying. Read it again. He may prepare it. Read from 16. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. Hey, give me that precept, Proverbs 13, 22. Here it is. Proverbs 13, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. Much food, excuse me, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Watch this. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. See that? The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Go back to Job. Job 27. Read, read uh, 16 and 17 again. Yes, sir. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. That's right. Go and ahead. the innocent shall divide the silver. And the innocent shall divide the silver. Go ahead. He buildeth his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper maketh. It's going to be destroyed. Their, whole, their house is all going to be knocked down. Go ahead. The rich man shall lie down. The rich man shall lie down. But he shall not be gathered. But he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes. And he is not. You see that right there? About the rich man who opens his eyes and he is not, meaning he's dead. You got many of our people who follow the same steps as Esau. Give me that real quick, Luke 16, 23, about our people. Luke chapter 16 and verse 23. Luke chapter 16, verse 23. Start, start at 22. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. The 12 tribes of Israel died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. They were carried into Abraham's bosom. That's the elect of the 12 tribes. Go ahead. The rich man also died. The rich man also died. Our people who sided with Rome, sides with America, also died. And was buried. And was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. And in hell, destruction, he lift up his eyes. Being in torment. Being in what? In torment. In torments. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, that's all I wanted. Let's go on back. We'll cover that another time. Back to Job 27 and verse 19 again. Yes, sir. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Because he's dead. Go ahead. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. Right. Get that in Job 18, 11. About terrors shall take him on every side. Job 18, 11. Here's another parable, another similar to, another prophecy. Job chapter 18, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side. Yeah, it's going to be bombs blowing up on every side. Go ahead. And shall drive him to his feet. Come on. His strength shall be hunger bitten. America's strength going to be forgotten. Go ahead. And destruction shall be ready at his side. Read. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Uh -huh. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Christ is the firstborn of death. Go ahead. His confidence shall be rooted out of es his... Esau's confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle. His tabernacle is America. Go ahead. His tabernacle. And it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Christ is the king of terrors. Go ahead. 
it shall dwell in his tabernacles. It shall, destruction shall dwell in his tabernacles. Because it is none of his. Because it's not his. He stole it. Go ahead. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Mm -hmm. His roots shall be dried up beneath. And above shall his branch be cut off. Mm -hmm. His remembrance shall perish from the earth. He's going to be forgotten. Come on. And he shall have no name in the street. Nobody's going to remember this white man's name in the street. Go ahead. He shall be driven from light into darkness. Because right now it appears that this white man is in light. But he's going to be driven into darkness. Go ahead. And chased out of the world. He's going to be chased out of this world. Go ahead. He shall neither have son. He shall neither have son. Nor nephew. Nor nephew. Among his people. Among his people. Nor any remaining in his dwellings. That's what we just read in Isaiah 14, verse 20 and 21. That's what we read in Job 27. It's all saying the same thing. Everybody understand that? Let's go on back to Job 27. Job chapter 27, verse 20. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth. And as a storm hurleth him out of his place. Mm -hmm. For God shall cast upon him and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him. Men shall clap their hands at him. Go ahead. And shall hiss him out of his place. And hiss him out of his place. Give me that precept in Jeremiah 49, 17. Jeremiah 49, 17. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 17. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished. Everyone's going to be shocked. Go ahead. And shall hiss. And so what? And shall hiss. That's what Job said. Oh, everyone's going to hiss him out of his place. Go ahead. At all the plagues thereof. At all the plagues. He's going to name one major plague. Watch, watch this. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's just like Sodom and Gomorrah fell by fire and brimstone, shall, so shall the United States of Babylon be overthrown by fire and brimstone. Go ahead. And the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there. Nobody's going to abide here. Neither shall a son of man dwell no in it. No man shall dwell here. Now let's go back to Job. Job chapter 1. We ain't finished with the forefather, Job. Almost, but not quite. Job chapter 1, verse 22. Job chapter 1, verse 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So I want everybody to remember that. In all that Job went through, he did not sin, and he did not charge or blame God foolishly. Okay? Give me Job 7 and 20. Job chapter 7 and verse 20. I have sinned. Now this is Job speaking. He's humbling himself down. He says, surely it has to be something I done did. He said, I have sinned. Go ahead. What shall I do unto thee? Come on. O thou preserver of men. Mm -hmm. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? Go ahead. So that I am a burden to myself. And why doest thou not pardon my transgression? So he's asking the Lord, why don't you pardon my transgression? Go ahead. And take away my iniquity. And please take away my iniquity. For now shall I sleep in the dust. For now shall I die. Go ahead. And thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Lord, I won't be here in the morning. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 14, 20. About repenting. Repentance. Humbling yourself down to the Lord. There's another scripture where Job said, whoever died being innocent. Meaning there's no man, there's no woman that's innocent upon this earth. So I want... Jeremiah 14, 20 and 21. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 20. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness. So that's what all of us got to do in here. We got to acknowledge our wickedness. Go ahead. And the iniquity of our fathers. We also got to acknowledge the iniquity of our fathers. Go ahead. For we have sinned against thee. For we have sinned against the Lord. So the same suffering Job went through, we as a nation, as a people, have suffered likewise. Go ahead. Do not abhor us. Don't hate us, O Lord. For thy name's sake. For thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Don't disgrace the throne of thy glory. Go ahead. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Break not your covenant with us, O Lord. Watch this. Job 42 and 1. Job 42, 42. I want you all to pay close attention to this. Job chapter 42. Read verse 1. Yes, sir. Then Job answered the Lord and said. Now, 
Watch Job's answer. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Wherefore, I abhor myself. Job said, I abhor myself. And repent in dust and ashes. Job said, I repent in dust and ashes. From there, jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Then came to Job. Pay close attention to this. Then came to Job all his brethren. And all his sisters. And all his sisters. And all they. That had been of his acquaintance. And all they that had been of his acquaintance. Before. Before. And did eat bread with him in his house. And did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him. And they bemoaned him. And comforted him. They comforted him. Over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. About all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And every one an earring of gold. So everybody came to Job and brought him Money. Now, give me Isaiah 16, 11. And we're going to read down to 17. Isaiah 60 and 11. Job's life is our life of the nation of Israel. Isaiah 60, 11 down. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be opened continually. Why? They shall not be shut day nor night. Why? That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. The wealth of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. And that their kings may be brought. Dang, Abiel, come on, man. <laughs> read that again, read that again. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Uh -huh. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. So just like Job's friends, his brothers, everybody brought him wealth. The nations are going to do the same thing with us. Come on. And that their kings may be brought. And that their kings may be brought. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will Go not. Put it on the screen, man. Put it on the screen. All these nations are going to gather their wealth to bring it to us. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Read. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Come on. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree the pine tree, and the box together. So all these nations like y'all see on the screen, they're gathering gold and diamonds and wealth. All that's Bible prophecy of what they're going to do for us. Hey, hey, give me the precept in Revelation 21, 25. We're coming right back here. Revelation 21, 25. Revelation chapter 21, verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there, mm -hmm. and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Y'all see that? So John the Revelator, was that the whole verse, Yuri? Yes, sir. Jo uh, John the Revelator is saying the same thing Isaiah is saying, saying the same thing that happened to the forefather, Job. Back to Isaiah 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. To beautify the place of my sanctuary, mm -hmm. and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Read. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending shall unto come thee. Shall come bending unto thee. Come on. And all they that despise and thee. And all they that despised us. Shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. That's right. Come on. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Hey, didn't we read that early in Isaiah chapter 1? Verse 26. Read that real quick. I thought we read that. Read that. Isaiah 1, 26. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, mm. the faithful city. The faithful city. Back to Isaiah 60. Yes, sir. Verse, what verse you at? Verse I can read 14 again. Go ahead. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soul. Put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. Hey, remember when Christ said, be thou Lord. Yuri, give me that. In Luke 19, when he, that looked like Captain O'Shea for a moment. That's what I look at. It remind me of him. That's what I saw it. The nation's going to come bending unto us. Understand that. Yuri, give me that Luke 19, be thou Lord over 10 cities. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Come on. Luke chapter 19 and verse. Where we at? 
Yuri, you're messing me up. First, I got you. Come Bishop. on, Yuri. I got you, Bishop. Let, do I have to get it? I can see it. Luke 19, come on. Ah, oh, Lord in heaven. Bear with me a second. When he gave out the rewards. Luke 19, 17, thank you. Verse 17, and he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou have thou authority over ten cities. Have thou authority over ten cities. Read. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. Being over five cities. Put those pictures up, Elisha. The ones that show us over these cities. Okay? Our people, our, you men, you're going to rule this Earth, understand that thing. Come on, Elisha, come on. That is slowpoke stuff. We're going to rule all nations. Come on. We're going to rule. We're going to rule. We're going to rule. I hope everybody understands that, okay? I hope you women understand that. We're going to rule this planet in righteousness. That's what the Bible says. Not that, not yet, not yet, not yet. You take them off the screen. Go on back now to Job. I'm getting to them in a minute. I ain't get to them yet. Where we at? You want verse 11 again, sir? Where you at? Isaiah 60? Come on. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Come on. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. Because we've been forsaken and hated, brothers, have we not? Come on. So that no man went through thee. No man cared for us. I will make thee an eternal excellency. He said he's going to make us an eternal excellency. Come on. A joy of many generations. We're going to be a joy of many generations. Come on. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. Meaning all their wealth, all their riches. Go ahead. And shall suck the breast of kings. Everything the king's got is ours. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Come on. For brass, I will bring gold. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. The iron we got, he going to give us silver. And for wood, brass. The wood we got, he going to give us brass. And for stones, iron. And for the stones we got, he going to give us iron. Go ahead. I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. You know what an exactor is? A tax collector. We are going to be the tax collectors of the earth. Everybody understand that? We're going to take this silver, their gold, their brass, their iron. Everything is ours. Come on. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Violence shall no more be heard in our land. No more wars, no more fussing, no more fighting, no more stupid black Hebrew Israelites trying to start a fight with us. No more, no more, no more. Read. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. Read. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation. We shall call our walls salvation. And thy gates praise. Read. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Because Christ going to be our light. Go ahead. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. Go ahead. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God thy glory. Goes back to Job 42. Back to Job 42. Watch this. Watch this. Job 42 and verse 14. Job chapter 40. Start at 13. Start at 13 again. Job chapter 42 and verse 13. Watch this. Listen good. He had also seven sons. Remember Job lost his sons. Okay. Hey, I forgot where it is. Give me that in Isaiah. Is it 49 or 60? 60. Uh, it says, I lost. It said, who have brought me these? Dad, go on. Hold on. Hold on. Yuri, you know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. These, where have they been? Bear with me a second. Isaiah 49 and 21. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 21. Listen good, listen good, listen good. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, who hath begotten me thee, these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive. So we lost our children, talking about the two-thirds that's going to be put to death here. Read it again. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, who hath gotten me these? Who have gotten, because we're going to get new sons, new daughters. Go ahead. 
Seeing I have lost my children. Where I've lost my children, two thirds, go ahead. And am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro. Read. And who hath brought up these? Who have brought up these sons and daughters, go ahead. Behold, I was left alone. Mm -hmm. These, where had they been? These children, where did they come from? Where have they been? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. Watch this. And they shall bring. And they, they, the nations, go ahead. And they shall bring thy sons. They're going to bring our sons. In their arms. In their arms. And thy daughters. And our daughters. Shall be carried upon their shoulders. Shall be carried upon their shoulders. Back to Job. Back to Job. Back to Job. Uh, 42 and 13. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Uh -huh. And he called the name of the first Jemima. Uh -huh. And the name of the second Keziah. Mm -hmm. And the name of the third Uh huh. And in all the land were no women found so fair. Hey, do me a favor. Find Aunt Jemima on the pancake box. I'm sure I'll eat some macas. Aunt Jemima on the pancake box. I want the original. And, and the images. Hey, give me that one right there. Down, down, down. Right there, that one right there. That's it. This is what they did to us. Aunt Jemima on the pancake box. Little did we know that they was making mockery. Because the Bible says Job's daughter was Jemima. And instead of these three girls, they were the most beautiful on the whole planet Earth. Read it again. Go take it down now. Read it again. Verse 14. And, and he, give me them three girls now. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah. I want the three girls. It was three girls laughing, I think. Let me see. Right there. Put it on the screen. Now read it. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Corinne Kapuk. Go ahead. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. As the door, give me the other pictures of the women. Look at that, look at that, look at that. The women is gone, they're gonna have no blemishes, no pimples, no cellulite on the legs, no, no, no toes that's all jacked up. Y'all know them toes they be getting? None of that. Crow's feet. They ain't getting none of that. Read that again. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Hey, give me the precept today in Psalms 144, 12, about how our women going to be. Give me that, Psalms 144, 12. Psalms chapter 144, verse 12, that our sons may be as plants. Our sons going to be like plants? Grown up in their youth. Uh-huh. That Ooh. our daughters may be as cornerstones. Our daughters going to be like cornerstones? Polished. After the similitude of a palace. Meaning they're going to be beautiful. They're going to be lovely, just like Job's daughters. Give me that in Isaiah 61, 9. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Our sons and our daughters, our seed going to be known among the Gentiles. Go ahead. And their offspring. And among our offspring what? Among the people. Among the people. Everybody going to know our children. They're going to show respect and move the hell out their way when they come down the street. Go ahead. All that see them shall acknowledge them. Every nation that sees our sons and daughters shall acknowledge them. That's the prophecy. That's what we're going to get. Go ahead. That they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. That they are the seed that the Lord hath Everybody see that thing right there? Go on back to Job. We almost done. We almost out of here. Go ahead. Job 42. 15, one more again. I just like to hear it. Yes, sir. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job an hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. The only thing with us now, give me that Roman, uh, was it Romans 6, 23, about the gift we're going to get. Come on, come on. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. That's what you're going to get if you sin, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. But the gift of God. Now here's the gift of God that we all want. 
is eternal life. Is what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Go ahead. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus Lord. Christ, our Lord. Give me 1 Corinthians 2.9. We're almost done. We're almost done. So Job got on it. Job got blessed. Okay. Hey, hey, real quick. Give me that one in Sirach 2 where it said, whoever, I can't quote, who put their trust in the Lord and was something. I want that one. Give me that. It's Sirach chapter 2. It might be around verse 7, 6, 7, 10. Thank you. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 10. Listen, brothers. Listen, sisters. Look at the generations of old. Look at Job. He's from the generations of old. Go ahead. And see. And see this. Did ever any trust in the Lord? Who ever trusted in the Lord? And was confounded? And was confounded. Go or, ahead. Or did any abide in his fear? Or did any abide in his fear, keeping the commandments? And was forsaken? And was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Or whoever did God despise that called upon him? Was that it, uh, uh, I mean, Yuri? Yes, sir. So read the next verse. Verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion. For the Lord is compassion. That's what he, what he did to Job. He'll do for us. Go ahead. And mercy. And he's full of mercy. Long suffering. Long suffering. And very pitiful. And very pitiful. Is that it? And forgiveth sins. And he forgiveth sins. And saveth in time of affliction. And he saveth in time of affliction. 1 Corinthians 2.9. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. But as it is written, as it is written, I have not seen, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man what? the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So we put images on the screen. Put those images back, Alicia. We did, the, I want all of them, all of them. We stand in front of the castles and all that. We can't imagine. This is just what they come up on with in the computer. But the Bible says, the prophecy says, we can't even imagine it. Everybody understand it? Read it again, Yuri. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love That's him. Right. Read, read. But God hath revealed them unto us. But God hath revealed them unto us. By his spirit. By his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. Read. For what man knoweth the things of a man, uh -huh. save the spirit of man which is in him. Uh -huh. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Read. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. So, brothers and sisters, we have not received the spirit of the world. Go ahead. But the spirit which is of God. But the Holy Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Go ahead. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. We don't speak in the wisdom of this world, man's wisdom. Go ahead. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. We speak according to as the Holy Ghost teaches us. Go ahead. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, meaning precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Come on. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man is the sinful man. The natural man is the carnal man. It says the natural man receiveth not, does not believe the things of the Spirit of God. Go ahead. For they are foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because they are spiritually discerned. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? With that, we say. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support 